hi here we are going to discuss about the economic dispatch problem in power system simulation laboratory using scilab i am dr d silas stephen economic dispatch problem in power systems the generation is done such that the demand and the loss is met the objective of the economic dispatch problem is to meet the demand and the loss of the system such that the cost of generation is optimal the economic dispatch problem comprises of the unit commitment problem and the dispatch problem mathematically the economic dispatch problem can be stated as a minimization problem minimization cost function c is equal to summation of ca pgi where c is the total fuel cost n is the number of generating units the economic dispatch problem is subjected to the constraints hi of pg1 comma pg2 up to pgn which is equal to pd minus summation of pgi here the pd is the total demand pg is the power generated by the ith generating unit now the economic dispatch problem has a objective function and it is also subjected to a constraint so the objective cost cost function can be written as a lagrangian function as c star is equal to summation of i is equal to 1 to n ca pgi plus lambda pd minus summation of i is equal to 1 to n pgi here the lambda is the lagrangian multiplier now for solving the economic dispatch problem we have to consider some unit some equations now let us see the equations which we need the coordination equation which is the incremental cost equation dci divided by dpgi is equal to lambda the cost function of the generating unit ci is equal to fi of pgi is equal to ai pgi squared plus bi pgi plus ci rupees per megawatt per hour the power generated by the ith generator pgi is equal to lambda minus bi divided by 2ai lambda is equal to pd plus summation of i is equal to 1 to n bi divided by 2ai divided by summation of i is equal to 1 to n 1 divided by 2ai now let's discuss the flow chart for solving the economic dispatch problem without loss now i start with the flow chart first read the number of units n total demand pd ai bi ci or the coefficients of the cost functions pg minimum comma pg maximum which is the minimum and the maximum limit of each generating unit initially compute the lambda by using the lambda equation and also have a value for delta lambda now consider the first generating unit set i is equal to 1 now the determine the generation of the first generating unit now check whether the particular generation is violating the maximum limit that is pga is greater than pga max if it violates the maximum limit set pg i is equal to pg max similarly if it does not violate the maximum limit check whether it is violating the minimum limit if it is violating the minimum limit set pg i is equal to pg minimum then you increase the bus number and you check whether you have reached the maximum bus number or the unit number if you have not reached the maximum unit number you again go for the determination of the generation of the next generating unit again you check for the limits similarly until you have determined the generation for all the units you go on with this particular loop once you have determined the generations of all the units then you check for the power balance equation that is you calculate delta p is equal to summation of pgi minus pd 
now if p delta p is less than epsilon which is a constant it may be 0.001 or 0.001 so if it satisfies the condition you can stop with the process and you can print the generation value and also the cost if the condition is not satisfied and if the change in power delta p is greater than 0 if the condition is not satisfied under that condition you increase the value of lambda by delta lambda similarly if the condition delta p greater than 0 is satisfied under that condition you decrement the value for lambda of lambda as lambda is equal to lambda minus delta lambda now after incrementing or decrementing the lambda you go for, uh, determine the generation of the first unit for the by considering the incremental or decremental lambda and you go on with the process until the condition delta p less than epsilon is being satisfied so this is a simple flowchart for the economic dispatch problem without loss now let us solve a simple problem so that we will be able to understand the economic dispatch problem better now here we are considering a three unit system unit 1 2 and 3 which has the cost functions f1 f2 and f3 and it also has a minimum and maximum limits here we have to determine the economic generation schedule of the three units in the power system to meet a load of 925 megawatt step 1 first you determine the value for lambda by using the lambda equation pd plus summation of bi divided by 2ai divided by summation of 1 divided by 2ai we know pd is equal to 925 plus b1 divided by 2a1 plus b2 divided by 2a2 plus b3 divided by 2a3 divided by 1 divided by 2a1 plus 1 divided by 2a2 plus 1 divided by 2a3 now a1 is the coefficient of the pg1 b1 is the coefficient of the uh, first equation similarly b2 a2 b3 a3 all you can get from the cost functions now you substitute the values and by which you can determine the value for lambda which is 8.615 next you determine the generation generation pgi is equal to lambda minus bi divided by 2ai now first you determine pg1 so pg1 is equal to lambda minus b1 divided by 2a1 lambda is 8.615 b1 is the coefficient of pg1 that is 5.2 divided by 2 into a1 a1 is the coefficient of pg1 squared by substituting it you get the value for pg1 similarly you get the value for pg2 as lambda minus b2 divided by 2a2 pg3 is equal to lambda minus b3 divided by 2a3 now after finding the generation you check for the power balance equation now the power balance equation is demand is equal to sum of the generations sum of the generation is equal to pg1 plus pg2 plus pg3 now you substitute the value of pg1 pg2 and pg3 which you have determined in the previous step by that you get the value for 925 megawatt now the demand is also equal to the sum of the generations so the power balance equation is satisfied next you check for the generating limit now we have to check whether all the generations pg1 pg2 and pg3 or within the limit or not when you check we can find that for unit 2 the generation limit is 200 megawatt to 350 megawatt but when you find pg2 value it is 367.401 it is violating the maximum limit so as it is violating the maximum limit we said pg2 is equal to 350 megawatt Now you determine the new demand by neglecting the generator 2 or the unit 2. So PD new is equal to PD minus PG2. So which is 925 minus 350, 575 megawatt. Now you determine the lambda new and you determine the lambda new by considering the PD new and also the units 1 as well as 3. 
so which is equal to p d nu plus b1 divided by 2 a1 plus b3 divided by 2 a3 divided by 1 divided by 2 a1 plus 1 divided by 2 a3 here the second unit data is not being considered because we have set the value of the second unit to be as the maximum limit of the particular unit now by substituting the values you can find the value for lambda nu 8.5333 now by using lambda nu you can determine the value for pg1 and pg2 pg1 is equal to lambda nu minus b1 divided by 2a1 so lambda nu is 8.5333 minus 5.2 divided by 2 into 0.0045 which obtain it as 370.37 megawatt similarly you find the value for pg3 lambda nu minus b3 divided by 2a3 so by substituting it you can get the value for pg3 now we have obtained the value for pg1 pg2 is the maximum limit of the particular unit and pg3 is the value which we obtained here 204.639 now we have to check whether the optimal solution is being obtained for which we are checking for the optimality condition here the pg1 and pg3 are not violating the limit so the condition is lambda1 is equal to lambda3 is equal to lambda nu now but when you consider the second unit it is violating the maximum limit so lambda 2 is equal to do f2 divided by do pg2 should be less than the lambda nu value that is the condition for optimality so i am finding lambda 2 is equal to do f2 divided by do pg2 so do f2 by do pg2 is obtained by differentiating the cost function of unit 2 with respect to pg2 so 2 into 0 0.0056 pg2 plus 4.5 so which is equal to 8.45 by substituting pg2 is equal to 350 so which is less than the lambda nu so the optimality condition is satisfied so the optimal solution for the particular problem which we have obtained is pg1 is equal to 370.37 megawatt pg2 is equal to 350 megawatt and pg3 is equal to 204.639 megawatt now let us discuss how to write the program for this particular problem first clear all then clc by which i clear the screen as well as clear all the variables now first i am giving the cost function as a matrix such that the first row of the particular matrix has the coefficients of unit 1 that is a1 b1 and c1 second row of the matrix has the a2 b2 c2 and the third row of the matrix has the a3 b3 and the c3 value which are all the coefficients of the cost functions of the unit 1 2 and 3 next i am forming a matrix for the limits which is such that the first column of the particular matrix has the minimal limits of the units 1, 2 and 3 and the second column of the matrix has the maximum limits of unit 1, 2 and 3. Now the demand PD is equal to 925 megawatt, N is equal to 3, number of units. Now for determining the value of lambda, I am writing all these codes. Now here let me explain you how we are determining the value for lambda. Okay. Now first I am writing initializing a is equal to 0, b is equal to 0 and make a loop for i is equal to 1 is to n. Now why I am forming this particular loop is here we have to determine summation of b i divided by 2 a i and summation of 1 divided by 2 a i for the 3 considering the 3 units for which here I have written the loop like this a is equal to 0, b is equal to 0, for i is equal to 1 to n, a refers to the summation of b i divided by 2 a i, b refers to the summation of 1 divided by 2 a i of the lambda function. Okay. So, by which I am determining the value for lambda is equal to p d plus a divided by b. So, by the course, I will be able to determine the value for lambda. Once I have determined the lambda, we have to determine the generation for all the three units. So, I am determining the generation for all the three units as pg of i is equal to lambda minus bi divided by 2 into ai. 
So, the uh, uh, coding how it comes as Pg of i is equal to lambda minus B A is C of i comma 2 divided by 2 into A. So, 2 into C of i comma 1. Now, we have determined the Pg of i. Now, parallelly I am checking whether the limit violation is there or not. Okay. So, I am checking for the minimal limit. Now, if it is violating, it will display limit violated in unit. On which unit? K is equal to I. I am displaying K. Disp K. So, it displays the K value which is the unit which is, has violated the minimal limit. Now, if it has violated, what we have to do? We have to set the generation value to be at the minimum value. So, Pg of I is equal to limit of I comma 1. After which we determine Pd nu by neglecting the particular generation Pd minus Pgi. So, I end the loop. Next one is I am checking for the maximum limit if Pg of i is greater than limit of i comma 2. So, the same procedure I am displaying whether displaying whether the violation is there or not which unit is violating then you are setting such that your generation is equal to maximum limit of the particular unit then you determine the new demand value and end with the process. Now, here by these steps uh, uh, what you determine is you determine the generation of all the units and thereby you check for the limit violations and also you set if there is any violation you set whether the minimum value or the maximum value based on the violation and also you determine the new demand. Now, after determining the new demand, you have to determine the lambda nu. So, as we did the same thing for determining the lambda, here I am using the same function, but only one unit line is being added that is if i is not equal to k. For example, if a particular unit has violated, that should not be considered while determining the lambda nu. So, that particular if is equal, if i not equal to k is being added. Now, I determine the lambda nu. Now, by using the lambda nu, I determine the generation Pg of i. Now, by which we display the value of Pg. So, this is the simple program for the particular problem. Hope you have understood. Thank you.